Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say this. Nanito Denier, Nicholas Walters, right? I like Walters to win this fight. I give Denier a puncher's chance. So the hedge I like is Walters to win, hedged with Denier by KO. Let's talk about it, right? Let me give a little historical context. I believe in boxing. There are certain fighters who, when they first start out, before their body adjusts, have certain physical advantages over the people in the weight class they happen to be. So if you go back and if you look at Shane Mosley at lightweight, you're going to see one of the best lightweight champions in history. Right now, if you look at it, even back then, Mosley didn't move his head that well. Mosley didn't roll with punches, but he had hand speed and he had a huge punch for that division, huge punch, right, that no one could take. And when you combine the hand speed with the punch and the boxing ability that he did have, he dominated the lightweight division. The problem is as guys like Shane Mosley gain weight, I'll give you another guy, Thomas the Hitman Hearns at 147, right? He was bigger than everybody. He was taller. He had a longer reach. He had power. He was the Hitman at 147, right? As these guys gain weight, as their body fills out, parts of their game, right start to reveal themselves Shane Mosley you didn't notice the neck stiffness when he was at 135 you didn't you actually started noticing it as he got to 154 right Mosley was a great puncher I believe he's still a huge puncher but understand punches that would have ended the fight at 135 didn't quite end the fight at some of these higher weights. Guys like Ricardo Mayorga were able to hang around for several rounds. Now Mosley, to his credit, was a huge puncher, such a huge puncher, that even naturally bigger men, Mayorga eventually, uh, Feroz, Fernando Vargas, got knocked out by Mosley. But he wasn't the same fighter at higher weights that he was at lower weights. Thomas the Hitman Hearns was such a juggernaut at 147 that when people ask me who could beat Mayweather in history, well, I consider Mayweather to be the better overall fighter than Hitman, I take Hitman at 147. Understand though, Hitman was starting out his career then, right? Mayweather at 147 is really Mayweather at the tail end of his career. If you want to see Dominant Floyd, you have to drop down several divisions, right? Look at him against Diego Corrales, right? Well, this is a long-winded way for me to say, I believe Nanito Denier right now is going through the same problems that Shane Mosley went through as he gained weight, right? Mosley's volume dropped off from 135. Right? He didn't have the same stamina. He didn't have the same volume. Right? If you look at Nanito Denier, you remember him fighting at lighter weights. That Fernando Montiel fight was at 118 pounds. Right? The Nishioka fight was at 122 pounds. Right now, Denier is fighting at 126. He's fighting right now at weather, uh, excuse me, at featherweight. That's a problem. In my opinion, he's no longer the Denier you remember. 
he's had a string of fights that in my opinion exposed him a bit. Let's go back in time. The Rigondio fight. Rigondio undresses him. Denier who like Mosley was a boxer puncher at lighter weights. Right when he fights Rigondio he just looked baffled. His volume dropped. He was completely outboxed. He couldn't stop Rigondio's movement. Right? Victor Chinia, the next fight. I know in the books, he knocks out Darchinian in the ninth round. Just understand, though, that before then, Darchinian is schooling him. Before the knockout, the fight is not close. I know one of the judges had the fight a draw at the time of the knockout, right? I don't know who that judge was, right? Must have been the same judge who scored the Canelo Floyd Mayweather fight a draw. But understand the other two judges had Vic Darchinian up, right? Darchinian was beating Nanito Denier, right? But of course, as I like to say here online, Knockouts cause amnesia. All we remember is the stoppage. Vietka, that fight. That was a questionable fight. Totally questionable. Right? Denier, at times, is getting roughed up in that fight. Right? Of course, there's a cut in that fight, and it's debatable whether or not the punch that landed that caused the cut was legal. Right? I understand there's also an accidental head clash, but when you look at the footage, you're going to realize that there is a possibility that a punch landed that opened up the cut on Denier. So you know the rest. Denier knocks down the other guy because Denier is a huge puncher. He has a huge left hook. Huge. He knocks down Vietka in round four. Then, of course, Denier can't continue. We go to the scorecards. Here's a shocker. The guy with the knockdown in the fight actually wins the fight. Right? My point to you is, you go back. Those three fights, there's not a satisfactory Denier performance in any of them. You have to go all the way back to Jorge Arce in 2012. Right, dare I say, and I understand Denier has a nutritionist and, you know, loses weight and stuff like that. But from where I sit, I think Denier is in a bit of decline. By contrast, I view Nicholas Walters as on the rise. This is a thinking man's fighter. Right? Walters wears the weight well. Understand, Walters fought Vic Darchinian. Right? Walters dominated Darchinian in a way that Nanito Denier did not. Right? Walters is the bigger fighter. Right? Understand, Denier was at his best at lower weights. Now he's facing physically bigger men, right? You look at Walters' body, he looks huge up top at the weight, huge. And he's a big puncher, right? In a sport where a 60% KO ratio is impressive, Walters has a KO ratio over 80%. Now there's some lines in boxing that you know, really are words of wisdom, right? Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, rumble, young man, rumble, right? Kill the body and the head follows. Just understand that old timers say the legs are the first to go, right? Let me add to that your wind and your stamina go with your legs. You notice it in 
reduced volume. Right? Power is the last to go. Right? Big George Foreman could still knock you out when he was 45 years old. Right? You wouldn't want to get hit flush by Vitaly Klitschko even on his 40th birthday. Right? Power's the last to go. But the legs are the first to go. Now you go back and look at the copy box numbers for the Demir Mathabula fight. I don't get the feeling that Denaire the boxer, the guy who can outscore you on the scorecards, the guy who beat Wilfredo Vasquez Jr., I don't believe that guy exists anymore. Boxing's a brutal business. Right? It's brutal. Father Time, in my opinion, is the one clear-cut, unbeaten champion in the annals of the sport. Right? I think Denier now is a, like Shane Mosley was later in his career, was a puncher, is a puncher, masquerading as a boxer. Right? I don't believe he can outbox Nicholas Walters. In fact, I don't believe he can outpunch Nicholas Walters. I'm expecting Nicholas Walters to win this fight, the axe man, but I'll concede I haven't seen the guy yet who can take a denier left hook and continue to function clearly, right? The key thing to remember with denier is that in his last five fights, all five of those guys hit the canvas, right? Vietka did hit the canvas in the fourth round. He KOs Victor Chinian in nine, right? He drops Guillermo de Gundio in a later round. I believe it's the tenth round. He, of course, KOs Jorge Arce in three. He KOs Nishioka in nine. Right, understand, even the guy who beat Nanito Denier hits the canvas. Denier has a punch. At this point, though, I would argue that that's all he has. And this was a guy who, like Shane Mosley when he was younger, we thought of as a Ray Robinson. Right, a guy who, you know, forget his punch. If you couldn't handle his boxing, you were losing rounds on the scorecard. I don't believe that guy exists. Let me hear from you. I like Nicholas Walters to win this fight, hedged with Denier by KO, because Denier does have a punch. Let me say this. I noticed online that Denier is still on some pound for pound lists. You know, it's the gap between what people think and what is where you make your money right understand there's a lag you have a group of fight commentators and boxing fans out there who go by wins and losses they see Vic Darchini and hit the canvas in the ninth round and they say oh Denier got him again right they're not thinking in terms of what did my scorecard actually say what was happening in this fight in the 4th, 5th, and 6th rounds? Wasn't Vic looking good? Not only that, that Darchinian fight's particularly disturbing. Because that fight's a rematch. Right? Shouldn't Denier have known Vic better? To do better? Why was it in the rematch that Darchinian seemed to be fighting a diminished version of Nanito Denier. A lot of people don't ask those questions. They see the win. They see the KO. They have a pound for pound list. He's on it. Right? Let's face it too. Not everyone's famous in boxing. You say Vietka, people are like, who, who? You know what I'm saying. Nishioka, people are like, who, who? These are great fighters. Right? Everyone knows Nanito Denier. He's the guy who's been on HBO, right? He's the guy who's been in high-profile fights. Don't confuse fame with talent. In my opinion, younger Denier 
beats current Daener. I think Daener is a shell of himself. I'm expecting him to lose his next match, but I am going to hedge the play. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.